the gospel of the Lord. Well, as I mentioned at the beginning of Mass today, we celebrate the Feast of St. John Lateran. Uh, it's a basilica. It's a church in Rome. Uh, it's one of those feast days in the church that no matter on which day it falls, we always celebrate it. And so even though it's on a Sunday, uh, we celebrate uh, Mass of November 9th. And so this, it, the Mass that we talk about are about a temple. And, um, and so this, uh, because uh, this church that was significant for us in Rome, I guess the church is significant because it's the first public place of, of um, Christian worship. It's the first, and it was built in uh, year 324. So almost 300 years after Jesus, the first public place that we can worship. That was, of course, because of uh, the persecutions. The churches that existed where people worshipped were always in people's homes before that because Christianity wasn't recognized uh, as a religion. Because, uh, why? Because they didn't, uh, they didn't worship all the gods. They're actually considered atheists. So they only worship the one true God. So it's um, uh, a day that we remember the church. Um, it's a physical structure, but it's something, there's a greater mystery there, something much deeper than, than just a building. Uh, it's a fact that... Uh, that this temple that has been foreshadowed in the Old Testament, where water would flow from it, uh, is now fulfilled in Jesus and now lives on in the church. A beautiful line. Um, Every sort of living creature, well, the water that flow from the eastern district empties into the sea and the salt water which it makes fresh. Uh, for wherever where this water comes, the sea shall be made fresh. And so there's, uh, that's Jesus. Wherever he walked, there was this fragrance of holiness and truth and goodness, and you couldn't help but be captivated by it. And today, um, we recall him uh, living in his church. Church is the mystical body of Christ. Jesus is the head, and in the second reading, it says we are the members. We are um, God's dwelling now. And so we want to um, recognize that we're temples of the Holy Spirit. No matter what comes into our temple, what, what, we, what we see and what we, even what we eat um, affects this soul, this place where God is supposed to dwell and how he loves to dwell in you. That's what it means from baptism, that we are, um, that we're become partakers in his own spirit. So as Jesus today sees the temple being desecrated, he takes the whips and the cords and he has a righteous anger. Um, um, uh, of what shouldn't be in the temple is in the temple. And we're called to have that same righteous anger uh, with sin in our own lives. What do we allow into our minds or into our bodies that's not of God, that's not fitting of, of a place for him to dwell? We want that same righteous anger and have a holy hatred uh, for evil. In the early church, uh, before one was baptized, um, they used to... Uh, make their baptismal promises facing the West. And, and they would say, I, I renounce uh, the glamour of sin, I renounce Satan, I renounce evil. Um, and then what they'd actually do is they would spit towards the West. That's a sign of the setting sun. Um, and they would turn towards the East, turn towards the baptismal font, and then enter into the church. And then go and celebrate the Eucharist for the first time. So while we don't do that anymore, probably for the sake of the person sitting next to your right, uh, we still want to have that holy hatred for sin um, to say that uh, that doesn't belong within me because I'm a temple of God. Um, and this should lead to a, a, a holy pride, too, uh, that we are meant to love ourselves. Yeah? You're meant to love yourself, not because of any kind of disorder, but because God lives within you, and he's worthy of love. So this church, um, this temple, is Christ, and he lives within us, and he also lives in the church. Uh, to, uh, the, his, that's his body. And so St. John Lateran has a specific tie to the Holy Father. 
Um, it's his church. It's the Bishop of Rome's church. And it'll never be destroyed because it's the body of Christ. And we know that he lives eternally. There's a story about Cardinal Francis George, who's recently retired from Chicago. But when he was, uh, when they had just elected the Holy Father Pope Benedict back in 2005, uh, he and a number of the cardinals were standing in the loggia, which is that balcony next to uh, where they come out and say, we have a new pope, Habenus Papum. So the cardinals were waiting for the new pope to be vested and to come out. And he was looking uh, pensively, you know. He was looking kind of at his, uh, like an iconic photograph, and he's looking out over Rome. And one of the priests of Chicago asked him later, he said, what were you looking at, cardinal? And he said, well, I, I was looking out over the city of Rome, and from there we could see all kinds of different things. And in the center of St. Peter's Basilica, I could see that uh, giant Egyptian obelisk that was brought back from Egypt when the Romans conquered Egypt um, thousands of years ago. And then I could see just beyond uh, St. Peter's into the Colosseum, and I could see this, the, the, the symbol of the ancient pagan Rome and kind of their blood sport. And, I, and then I thought to myself, where is Pharaoh's successor? That's Egypt. They came from that, that obelisk. He said, where's, where's Pharaoh's successor? I said, well, where's Caesar's successor? You know, coming from that Colosseum, the Romans. He said, well, they're not here. Well, where's Peter's successor? He was about ready to walk out the door. So we're part of a church that will never be destroyed uh, because Christ lives within it. Christ lives within us. Um, and may we welcome him. Uh, may we be fitting dwelling place for God because he loves to dwell within us.